today we are going to start an important topic straight line but before we start straight line we have to discuss what is locus consider the following sets of points number 1 consider all points in a plane which are equidistant from the fixed point suppose c is the fixed point now we consider all points in a plane which are at a fixed distance of say 10 units from c we know that set of all such points is what is a circle with center c and radius equal to 10 consider another set of points suppose a and b a and b are two fixed points okay a and b are two fixed points in the plane of course the set of all points in this plane which are equidistant means same distance equidistant from a and b is what it is perpendicular bisector of segment ab right so every point on this is equidistant from two fixed points a and b okay so set of all such points set of all such points which satisfy certain geometrical condition or conditions is called as locus so how will you define locus locus is set of points satisfying certain geometrical condition or conditions the plural of locus is l o c i locus okay uh, so how will you uh, define locus using uh, set notation in the beginning i will say a locus is a set of points in a plane which satisfy some given geometrical condition or conditions suppose p is any point on the locus then i can say that locus locus is nothing but all points p such that p satisfies p satisfies certain geometrical condition or conditions so this is nothing but locus okay now you will say why to say set of points in a plane because initially we are considering uh, locus of points in a plane only you can say that set of all points in the space equidistant from the fixed point is called uh, is what is sphere right but initially we will be considering set of points in a plane because after this topic uh, we are going to discuss circle parabola ellipse hyperbola all these are what these are uh, set of points that is look at in a plane now in locus we are mainly interested in obtaining equation of a locus the equation of a locus is an algebraic relation satisfied by the coordinates cartesian coordinates x y of every point of the locus now finding the equation of locus so it becomes the basic problem in the study of coordinate geometry and that is why uh, we have begun with the concept of locus what is the procedure for finding the equation of a locus to obtain the equation of a locus we generally proceed as follows the first step step 1 take any point p x1 y1 on the locus we always begin with let p x1 y1 be any point on the locus second step we write geometrical condition or conditions for that particular locus so second step is to write geometrical condition or conditions okay now third step we express this geometrical condition or conditions in the form of an algebraic relation in x1 and y1 and for this we have to use distance formula or section formula now fourth step we replace x1 by x and y1 by y in this relation now in many cases what happens that from the beginning only 
we can take point as p x y instead of x one y one. So if there is no possibility of any confusion or ambiguity, we start with let p x y be any point on the locus. So finally, finally, the relation between x and y so obtained is termed as equation of locus. Okay. Now consider that example of circle. Suppose we are given that fixed point C is uh, say one comma two, and every point is equidistant from C, and that distance is five. Now in this case there is no need to consider let P x one y one be any point in the plane. We say let P x y be any point on the locus. Now what is the geometrical condition? Geometrical condition here is CP equal to radius that is phi. So what is CP square? It is nothing but phi square. Now how to convert this geometrical condition into an algebraic relation between x and y? For that we use distance formula. So by distance formula, CP square is what? X minus one square plus y minus two square. Equal to phi square that is twenty five. Now we have to simplify this to get x square plus y square minus two x minus four y minus twenty equal to zero. So that is called as equation of locus. Uh, I think we have already discussed this in that uh, um, mathematical methods for physicists lectures. Uh, so this is just repetition. Uh, so we are now in a position to solve sums. Uh, exercise five point one. Actually, second and fourth are for homework. These are the answers for these two sums. Now the first sum: If a one three and b two one are points, find the equation of the locus of point P such that P A equal to P B. Okay. I think third one is also similar. Let us solve first and third both. So write the solution. Let P X Y be any point on the locus. Write the solution. Let P X Y. Let P X Y be any point on the locus. Right now. A is one three, and B is two one. We are given. We are given. P A equal to P B. therefore pa square equal to pb square i still remember uh when i was in 11th standard 1986 our teachers used to tell us that you are not supposed to write pa square you are supposed to write in bracket length pa bracket complete square equal to because Use square the length. P A square is actually not correct, but nowadays they allow instead of writing length square of length P A, we just say P A square. So by that we mean square of the length of segment P A. Okay. So P A square equal to P B square by distance formula. By distance formula, you should know what distance formula is. So, P A square is what x minus one square plus y minus three square equal to x minus two square plus y minus one square. Now, rearrange this. Now, some students write P A equal to P B. They use distance formula. And then they say on squaring. That is also correct. Tell me the final answer. Uh, if possible, write note. 
that locus is perpendicular bisector of uh, segment ab now how will you verify the answer see what is midpoint of segment ab midpoint of segment ab is 1 plus 2 upon 2 that is 3 by 2 and 2 so coordinates 3 by 2 2 should satisfy the equation yes they are satisfied so what we have found is correct so this is how you have to verify the answer sum number 3 if a 2 0 and b 0 3 are two points find the equation of the locus of the point p such that ap equal to 2 bp uh, so as usual let p x y be any point on the locus a 2 0 b 0 3 are the given points what is the geometrical condition ap equal to 2 bp actually you can use distance formula in this step or first square so ap square is not 2 bp square it is 4 bp square use distance formula simplify tell me what is the answer i think final answer is 3x square plus 3y square plus 4x minus 24y plus 32 equal to 0 do not write this answer directly you are supposed to write the steps before this final answer that square open all the brackets and so on so this is the uh, after this we have to say that this is the required equation of locus this is the required equation of locus fifth one a24 and b58 are the given points find equation of locus of point p such that pa square minus pb square is 13 you have to begin with let p x y be any point on the locus a is 2 4 b is 5 8 geometrical condition is pa square minus pb square equal to 13 use distance formula now don't uh, write like this you are supposed to expand x square minus 4x plus 4 and so on on simplification you should get equation of locus as 3x plus 4y minus 41 equal to 0 sum number 6 is important a16 and b35 find the equation of the locus of the point p such that segment ab subtends right angle at p that is angle apb equal to 90 degrees <clears throat> let p x y be any point on the locus angle apb equal to 90 degrees right so triangle is right angled by pythagoras theorem ap square plus bp square is ab square use distance formula simplify to get final answer as what x square plus y square minus 4x minus 11y plus 33 equal to 0 a good student will write note after this that locus is a circle locus is a circle with ab as diameter of the circle see you should know from geometry angle inscribed in a semicircle is a right angle right now so if possible draw this sketch also so locus is a circle with ab as diameter angle inscribed in a semicircle is a right angle so after this we discuss an important result uh, that is shift of origin now we discuss formally for shift of origin now basically why to shift the origin you know that this is parabola we say that this is in standard form that is to obtain this equation we have we make proper choice of coordinate axis we know that equation of this parabola is y square equal to 4x now this is also parabola if we want to study the features of this parabola see we already know the features of this one so what should be done we shift the origin from this point to this point so this parabola also becomes standard one so that its features can be studied okay but for that we must obtain relation between old coordinate of a point new coordinate of a point and coordinates of shifted origin suppose 
x and y, small x and small y, they are old x and y coordinates. Suppose we shift the origin to the point O dash. Now I take coordinates of shifted origin as h comma k. Note that new x axis is parallel to old x axis and new y axis is parallel to old y axis. See, Pxy is the point in the plane. Note that small x and small y represent old coordinates of the point P. Means what? They are coordinates with reference to old axis. Now point is the same. We are not changing its position. But as origin is shifted to O dash, the same point will have different coordinates. Right? In short, we are interested in finding the relation between, suppose we take new coordinates of the point P as x, y, that is, these are the coordinates with reference to new x axis, capital X and new y axis. So we are interested in finding relation between small x, that is old coordinate, capital X, new x coordinate and h, x coordinate of the shifted origin. Similarly, small y, capital Y and small k. Now we draw perpendicular from the point P <clears throat> on old x axis. So P n dash. Suppose it cuts new x axis in n. So P n is also perpendicular, right? So these are the perpendiculars. Now what is between this? P dash, n dash, n dash. Can I say that P n dash is P n plus n n dash? Yes, I can. P n dash is the distance of the point P from old x axis, which is old y coordinate. So P n dash is small y equal to P n distance of the point P. When I say distance, by that I mean direct distance because distance is never negative, but coordinate can be. So P n Rather, Pn is the distance of the point P from x-axis, new x-axis, which is new y-coordinate of the point, plus Nn dash. Nn dash is the same as this distance, which is the distance of the point O dash from old x-axis, which is what? K. Now, some students say, sir, how can um, y-coordinate of the origin be K? Remember, this is old y-coordinate because we will say that origin is shifted to the point say 3, 7. So 3, 7 will be the coordinates of the point where origin is shifted. So new coordinates of origin are going to be 0, 0. No doubt about that. So can I say now that small y is capital Y plus K. Similarly, by drawing perpendicular on Y axis, we can obtain this relation small x equal to capital X plus H. So small x equal to capital X plus H and small y equal to capital Y plus K are called as formulae for shift of origin. Right? We can rearrange the terms to get what? Capital X equal to X minus H, small x minus H and capital Y equal to small y minus K. So this is the relation between old coordinate, new coordinate and coordinate of shifted origin. Now there is one more case uh, in that you do not uh, shift the origin. Origin is there only, but you rotate the axis through certain angle. But we are not interested in discussing that. Okay, so right now. So I repeat, small x is capital X plus H, small y is capital Y plus K, where X, Y are old coordinates, small x, Y, capital X, capital Y, new coordinates and HK are coordinates of shifted origin. So you can remember this as old coordinate is new coordinate plus coordinate of shifted origin. Rearrange the terms to get what? Capital X equal to small x minus H and capital Y equal to small y minus K. Uh, exercise 5.17 sum. If the origin is shifted to the point O dash 2, 3, the axis remaining parallel to the original axis, this is important, find the new coordinates of the points. Means what? 
given coordinates must be old coordinates simple so we have to say that shifted origin hk is 2 3 so clearly h equals 2 k is 3 shift of origin formally r small x equal to capital x plus h small y capital y plus k every time you have to write this but we are interested in new coordinates so capital x x minus h that is x minus 2 capital y y minus k that is y minus 3 so a part old coordinates x y are 1 3 substitute the values so what are the new coordinates minus 1 0 similarly second point b so i will say b x comma y is what 2 5 So capital X is small x minus two. That is two minus two equal to zero. Similarly, find out capital Y, small y minus three. That is five minus three, which is nothing but two. Therefore, new coordinates. New coordinates are. Point is the same, but as origin is shifted, same point has new coordinates zero to. Actually, you can obtain answer by drawing graph also. This is old x axis. This is old y axis. Origin is shifted to which point? It is two three. So this is new y axis. This is new x axis. This is new origin, right? Two three. Now the first point is. One three, one three are the old coordinates. So one three, this is the point. Now you can observe that with respect to new axis, this point lies on x-axis. So check whether new y coordinate is zero or not. Yes, it is. And this much is one, but to the left of x-axis, that is on negative x-axis. So new x coordinate is minus one. Yes, minus one zero are the new coordinates of which point. One three. So this is how you can obtain the answer by drawing the graph. Now we discuss the remaining sums in the next lecture.